Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, that website address for you if you don't already know. It's www.TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. And I've been getting so many good questions lately. And uh, I'm actually behind. I got like five more questions to get to. But keep them coming. If you have a question, I love it. I'm sure other people have the same question. So email me. Dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com Again, it's Dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com Keep the questions coming. Uh, today's question is, what is an appropriate amount to pay a PI, or a principal investigator? Uh, for those of you that don't know what a PI is, they are the doctor that is in charge of the clinical trial at a given research site or a research clinic. So they're the ones who actually take the responsibility. Um, and in the FDA's um, eyes, in the FDA's rules, they're the ones held responsible for the conduct of the trial. So it doesn't matter what company or what academic institution the principal investigator works for. At the end of the day, when he or she signs that 1572 form, they are taking on responsibility and promising the FDA by signing that form that they are going to conduct the study with, with all good clinical practice guidelines and they are going to obey all FDA regulations. And as far as the conduct of the study, there is going to be no fraud, there is going to be no unnecessary harm to subjects, intentional harm or harm by negligence or due to negligence. So in many cases the PIs really do take on a lot of their responsibility and it's true that the sponsors, the drug companies or the CROs that are sponsoring the study or paying the PI or whether they're paying the PI directly or paying the research clinic who then pays the PI, they do identify them. They do hold them harmless as long as they follow the protocol and follow GCP but the FDA does not care about that. If you are the PI and you show that you don't have, that you're lacking the proper oversight for your clinic or that you were negligent and allowed your staff to make careless mistakes or deviations from the protocol, major deviations from the protocol that caused significant, or not even significant, but that caused adverse events in subjects uh, for any reason or caused any harm to subjects for any reasons, the FDA is going to hold this person liable and that may come in the form of fines or just barring them from research altogether and in very extreme but rare cases uh, jail time although that I haven't heard of that for a while I think there was one case of that a couple decades ago where the PI was just making up study participants out of thin air and enrolling them, enrolling them into the study, basically making up fraudulent data. But when it comes to legitimately doing a study, a PI is taking the responsibility and is usually held harmless by the CROs or the sponsors as long as they follow the protocol and have the appropriate oversight in place. Now, all that being said, I, I want to introduce and I want you guys to have some context behind what a PI is because I'm going to talk to you about an answer question I got regarding what is an appropriate amount to pay a PI and this is a question from a research site they are not owned by PIs they're owned by study coordinators so it's an interesting situation here um, many PIs actually own the research clinics where they're conducting the studies from so at South Coast Clinical Trials we used to be owned by PI um, so it's a very common, very, very, very common setup and business model for a doctor who's interested in conducting research to form a company, run a clinic, and him or her take on the research responsibilities. It's very common. I would say like 80% of the private sites out there are owned by the PI. Now, in those cases, of course, what is appropriate to pay yourself is whatever you can afford. And then if you hire other PIs, at that point, 
you're going to be in the same you're going to be asking yourself the same question what is appropriate to pay this pi so for this is also a good uh topic for those of for those sites out there that are pi owned um, as long as your pi if your pi wants to do studies himself for the re or herself for the rest of the study that's fine and this video doesn't apply to you but if he or her eventually wants to bring on another PI to help and they don't want to give up the ownership necessarily in the company they might want to know what is an appropriate fee for PI so let me tell you there's three different ways to go about this and there's a combination of these three that you can use um, in any combination that you decide there's no rules here number one is follow the budget so there's a PI fee in the budget and this is probably the simplest way to do it there is a PI fee in the budget and so when you get a study and you get the budget look at it and look at the template and it will list out every assessment and there's a monetary value for every single assessment at every single visit so in, in every single visit there should be something called a PI fee that may be two hundred dollars for a visit it might be four hundred dollars for a visit it really depends so to keep it very simple you can just offer your PI this PI fee and pay them for every visit that they do another option is related to this one but even more detailed it's actually breaking down from the budget every single procedure that that PI will be doing in addition to the PI fee so let's say there's a PI fee of two hundred dollars well let's say the PI also does physicals also does the inclusion exclusion criteria and also does the um, the medication uh, management or the washout of current con meds for the study participant now you add up those three and I'm just using examples it could be anything that your PI does find out what your PI is going to be doing and look at what those how much those assessments cost or how much you get reimbursed in the budget for those and you can pay them that plus the PI fee the third and final way to do it is to just say forget about all that stuff I'm just I want my PI to have some kind of skin in the game without necessarily giving him or her ownership I want them to reap the rewards of our site as we enroll subjects and it's not bribing them but it's just making them part of the process and uh, letting them know that it's important to get people enrolled in the study it's important to get people randomized and we do what we can to not screen fail these subjects if at all possible and provided that the protocol allows for it so how can we give this PI some kind of incentive? And a percentage is usually appropriate. Now what percent you're willing to give to the PI is up to you. I've done, and this was very expensive at the time, but I had no choice, 20%. So I told my PI, look, for every visit that we get, once we get paid, I'm going to cut you a check for 20% of that. And since I've gotten bigger, I've reduced that to 8%. So some of the PIs prefer receiving this percentage. Others prefer just fee-for-service, which is the second option I discussed, where you kind of add up all the assessments that they did, and then go to the budget and look at what that assessment is worth, and then cut them a check that way or you can just do the PI fee there and you can do a combination of these three it really depends on what you're trying to do another alternative is to kind of figure out what the average of these costs are whichever option you're going to choose or if you're going to choose the combination just figure out the average cost per month that this is costing you on average and then add your PI to payroll and just pay them every month now there's negatives to all these things and there's benefits to all these things as well obviously if you put the PI on the salary there's no real incentive for him or her to have patients enrolled um, so you might get some screen fails where otherwise you can incentivize the PI to do whatever he or she can 
as long as the protocol permits, um, you know, you're kind of encouraging them to go the extra mile to make sure subjects get randomized. And oftentimes it's as simple as calling up the sponsor or the medical monitor and requesting a waiver to allow this person who maybe should have been screen failed to perhaps be enrolled. Um, it really varies, but that's the benefit of the percentage. It's like you're giving them extra incentive. They have some skin in the game. Um, other sites prefer the predictability of having someone a PI on salary. And some PIs prefer the predict predictability and the consistency of having a fee for service. So they'll know whether this person screen fails or not. These are the assessments I did. These are the fees I get. It depends. It really depends. I mean, these are the three or four different options I kind of laid out here. This is how most research clinics pay their PIs. If you know of any other ways that PIs get compensated for their uh, efforts and their time at a research clinic, uh, let me know. And I'd love to hear all your <coughs> excuse me all your comments in the comments section, or if you're watching this on YouTube, in the comments on YouTube. Let me give a quick shout out to my clinical trial guru producers. That is Sarah Elizabeth Siegler, Resolve Research Solutions, Accurate Clinical Trials, Erdhart Clinical Trials, PTNR, Patrick Stone. We have Darshan Kulkarni from Kulkarni Law Firm, Biofarm Systems, Zymewire, Mozio, South Coast Clinical Trials, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, and St. Paul Medical Research Center in Miami, Florida. If you want to be a clinical trial guru producer, let me know. I'm having I'm only allowing 100 producers and that's it. And you're going to pay 99 bucks for a lifetime membership. You get mentioned in every video. It's ridiculous. But once I reach 100, that's it. I'm never accepting anymore. I think I need to have some scarcity for that. And again, let me know your thoughts on PI compensation. This is uh, something that obviously many sites are interested in and something that we're all still trying to find the right balance. Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you.